Big band music, the main listening pleasure of the early 20th century, was created for dancing and easy listening. It had and still has the ability to make folks want to get up and dance. The people behind this music were incredibly talented musicians and amazing, generous human beings. Hi, I'm Rachel Moffat, student at Middle Georgia State University, and I'm here to tell you about one big band musician in particular, Glenn Miller. Alton Glenn Miller was born March 1, 1904 in Clarinda, Iowa. The Miller family relocated frequently, but he spent most of his primary years in Grant City, Missouri. He wanted to join Grant City Community Band, but he only owned an old, undependable trombone. In return for a new trombone, Miller worked for the band's businessman director, John Mossberger. The Miller family relocated again in 1918 to Fort Morgan, Colorado. In high school there in Fort Morgan, Miller was quite the accomplished football player, and he was even given the prestigious title of Best Left End in Colorado. Despite his athletic talent, Miller's true aspirations led in music, specifically an up-and-coming genre called dance band. Miller's infatuation with his band and new music was so strong, he skipped his own high school graduation ceremony to go play a gig at a band several states away in Wyoming. After high school, Miller played with a few various bands until he had saved enough money to attend college. He enrolled at University of Colorado, but only completed two years of his studies. An opportunity to play and arrange for Tommy Watkins Orchestra presented itself, and it was reason enough for him to drop out and pursue his ultimate desire of managing his own band. The pursuit of this dream took Miller to L.A., where he played for Ben Polak Orchestra and roomed with big band clarinetist Benny Goodman, then to Chicago, and eventually to New York. There he arranged and played for Ben Polak again, the Smith Ballou Band, and Ray Noble's American Band, just to name a few. Miller's first attempt at his own band ended in financial ruin in 1937, but not to be deterred by his failure, Miller tried again one year later, and the second attempt led to great success. The band was selected to play for two very substantial radio broadcast gigs in New York and New Jersey. These radio opportunities led to the Glenn Miller Orchestra quickly becoming a household name. They became the number one big band in the nation, and in 1940, 45 of the, ba of the band's songs recorded that year were on the top seller chart. Neither the Beatles nor Elvis Presley were ever able to attain this feat. During World War II, Big Band took a huge hit. Many of the talented musicians were drafted, and even though Miller was not drafted because of his age, 38, he still felt the need to contribute. In 1942, as a captain in the Army Specialist Corps, Miller and his Army Band played for hundreds of radio broadcasts for all of the armed forces to hear. His unit was soon transferred overseas to London, then Bedford, England, and the band was performing nearly constantly. Within a span of 30 days, the band had traveled to 35 different military bases and performed 40 separate radio broadcasts, all in an attempt to boost the morale of our fighting soldiers and our hurting nation. In December of 1944, the band services were requested for a special Christmas radio broadcast. Miller was traveling by plane to Paris, France, to finalize the details of the performance when his plane went missing. The aircraft did not land in Paris, and despite all search efforts, the plane was never located, and Glenn Miller was presumed dead. Not long after Miller's death, the, decline of the, de the declining big band era came to a close. A musicians' union strike, a wartime amusement tax on nightclubs, and radio DJs were all factors in the demise of Big Band's popularity. Despite this, Big Band's effect on the nation cannot be understated. It is quickly closing in on an entire century since Big Band was in its prime, but its tunes, especially Glenn Miller's tunes, still resonate with today's generations.